Hello, everyone. This is Yo Yo from Xinhua News Agency. We are now doing live broadcasting on Xinhua social media platform like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube.、Uh, beside me is my colleague Pan Xu. Hi, everyone. It's Pan Xu with Xinhua News Agency. And as you can see, now we are in an art gallery of a company. But now today's topic and today's guest is a businessman. So、uh, Yo Yo now gives more. Okay, if you talk about the name of Robert Hudruff in China, that there are not many people who know who the guy is. But if you take have a look to at this, the Huren Report, so it will be totally different story. Huren Report, which is famous for its wealthy Chinese wealthy rich list and things is published published、uh, things in 1999, it draws many attention from domestically and overseas. So he is our main character today. Now let's say hi to Huren first. Hello.、Hey. Nice to hello. meet you. Hello, hello, hello. 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 I'm Rupert. So, Rupert. Can you please have a self introduction. Self introduction. Self -introduction.、Um, uh, my name is Rupert Hudruff. I'm an English guy living in Shanghai. I first came to China in 1990.、Uh, I spent a year studying in Beijing, and then I came back and effectively started my business in 1999,、uh, called the Huron Report. And we're best known in China for doing the rich list. And you know, so listing the richest people in China. That's, that's, but now we do quite a lot of other things as well. Everybody knows. <laughs> so first of all, my question is that about your Chinese name. So how you have a Chinese name of Huren? Is it because it has similar pronunciation as your English name, or is there any deep consideration? Because we know the Ren in Chinese has positive meaning, like moisture, smooth, and profitable. Yeah, that matches your career in China.、Uh, well. I mean, choosing a Chinese name is very important for anybody coming to China. You know, I used to have a different name called Hu Rupei, and、uh, because it was Hu means Hujuaf, very close to my English surname, and then Ru,、uh, Rupert. So, but I didn't like the name Hu Rupei. So when I started my business, I thought, okay, I'm going to change my name. So I found a, a friend of mine, and she was saying to me, well, Hu is okay, and then Ru, Hu Ru makes not so good.、Exactly. So we looked through the dictionary, we found Run. So it took us about five minutes to to do it, and then when I was setting up my business at the beginning, I wasn't quite sure how to set up a brand.、Um, but when I was doing so many interviews in the media, I thought to myself, well, in the end, I will set up a brand called Huron, and the Huron Report then sort of came about. So it's not it is my name, but it's not my real name. My passport name doesn't have Huron on it. <laughs> It's <laughs> very interesting stuff. Yeah. So now we have the Huron Report, which people say if you understand the Huron Report, you will understand the new China, modern China, because it reflects the entrepreneur spirit in China. So I wonder why,、uh, when you first come to Shanghai to China to establish your business, why you choose this area? Well, for choosing a place to live was quite easy. I chose Shanghai because I thought to myself. If you know, I lived in Beijing one year before when I was、uh, 20 in 1990, and、uh, Beijing is very big, and Shanghai is more international. And I think we were probably the first, one of the first media to set up in as a headquarters in Shanghai. I don't think there were any other international media that set up. Obviously, we were a startup media, so we're not sort of a, a big name like Financial Times or, or or Wall Street Journal, something like that. But we were a startup media, and we set ourselves up in Shanghai.、Um, The the whole beginning of it was really trying to tell the story of modern China, be, by making people interested in modern China. Because it's very easy to make people interested. I had this idea; you can almost call it a brainwave. That if I talk about wealth, it's a global topic. Everybody above the age of 16 and below the age of about 80 is trying to accumulate wealth to improve their life and stuff like that. So I try to tell the story of modern China. Through the stories of the most successful entrepreneurs, and then work backwards. The stories of these people really do tell the story of modern China. And in fact, in 1999 was the 50th anniversary of the Communist Party of China.、Mm -hmm. So、uh, I thought to myself, what I'll do is I'll do 50 people, 50 entrepreneurs for 50 years, and then whoever is number one, number two, number three, their stories reflect the capital accum accumulation, the wealth accumulation, if you like, of China. We can work backwards from there. And I suppose. We were very lucky in a way because the stories of these entrepreneurs had never been told before. You know, we, you know, a lot of the super famous people that you can think of today, we were the ones who,、um, who sort of first told their stories, and, and got people interested and able to tell the story. You know, understand more about what's going on in China 
from across, uh, you know, from across the world. So I think that's been our greatest strength. Yeah. So now we are seeing that there are many paintings in the art right. gallery, so, and especially this one. Could you please introduce a little bit for us? Because yeah. you see it's a little bit uh, kind of strange or odd. Well, I mean, we, you're, you're today you're in, the Huren, you're in the headquarters of Huron Report, in, uh, the global headquarters in Shanghai. And uh, we found that the Chinese entrepreneurs, you know, they have a lot of different interests. And one of the interests was art collecting. Yeah. And so we started getting very involved in art. And we created something called the Huron Art Foundation, oh. whereby we started uh, you know, sort of promoting up-and-coming artists, if you like. And this is one such artist. He's not young. <laughs> he's, a, <laughs> he's from Chengdu. He's, oh. he's quite well established in Chengdu. But he's not, uh, he, he's not made it to the very top uh, of China yet. He's not in the top 100 in China yet. So we, we, we started promoting these entrepreneurs, these artists, I mean, to the entrepreneurs on our rich list. And we now have been doing it for three years, and we normally promote one or two up-and-coming Chinese artists every month. So we've probably promoted about almost, actually we're quite proud, almost 40, 50 artists. And this is one of them. One and, of them. and that's our current art foundation. 40 and, to 50 artists. Yeah, so we've got, we've got a collection now of about almost 100 pieces of art. And which artists are you thinking they're promising? The, these are artists. So we have something called the Huron Art List. So we rank the top artists alive today in China. But for a lot of the art world, I mean, people like us, we can't quite afford them because, I mean, the top 100 are really expensive. They might cost anything from like a million U.S. Million, dollars yeah. or hundreds of thousands of U.S. dollars, like an opening price. These guys are much cheaper. They probably sell around 20,000 U.S. dollars uh, at the piece. But we will try and catch them at an up-and-coming stage. So we'll try and promote them and, and, and let more Chinese entrepreneurs yeah. and, and people internationally be aware of them yeah. And then, you know, it helps the artists, and at the same time we collect them, but we're not for profit. The Huron Art Foundation is a not-for-profit business. It's for uh, being able to be, to say that we're part of the, yeah, the great... Yeah, get involved. No, no, we, no we, want to, we want to do this because we want to be part of this amazing time in China. This 10 years in China has created more wealth than any time in the history of China or in the history of the world. And we're trying to be a part of it by collecting the art. It's, 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 a, it's an idea, so it's, it's a bit of a dream. Our idea is that within 10 years, we will have about, we'll have promoted about 500 artists and we'll have about 1,000 works of art. So we've done three years. We've still got a long way to go, but it's, it's one of my little dreams uh, that, that, we, that we're putting together at the moment. Okay, thank you. So now could you please show us around? In yeah, sure. So, so as I said, we're in the, we have two headquarters. We have one in London. And we have one in Shanghai. In Shanghai, we have about 120 100 employees. 100 employees sitting around here. In this office? In this about office. 100 people in, in the office. All and of then, them are here now. Uh, well, most of them are here at the moment. And, and we, you know, our main business, if you like, in China is the research, research of the top entrepreneurs. And then we also provide a media. So we've got our own media as well to try and promote some of the stories that we that we come up with yes. um, so these are uh, a lot of these people are doing research or content creation as well yeah. um, so how many divisions are there in the office well uh, fundamentally i mean our business is uh, three things so we do research mm -hmm. is our number one and second things are media media and then we do some investments so we do these three, three dimensions three three, three main dimensions yeah. and um, we we're very proud because you know some of the people have been here for 10 years or more and uh, you know you start building a quite exciting to build a team together but it's hard work building a team managing people is hard work so the bicycles are uh, bicycles is one of our little businesses no it's one of our businesses that we've got involved in somehow um, we have about 20 investments uh, in different businesses one of which is is, is in uh, health is to do with healthy living yeah. and so the idea is Yes, so we're yes. an investor in this company. So business partners produces. Yes, so uh, you can see it's even got our brand on the bicycle. <laughs> it's called Green Star made Bamboo of, Bicycles. Made of bamboo. Right? And, and the idea is it's made of bamboo yeah. and it's promoting wellness and healthy living. So we find that at the moment Chinese entrepreneurs are really into wellness and becoming better, healthy, uh, you know, sort of looking for you know, better, healthy uh, life and such. So that's a big trend at the moment. So besides um, the rich list, you have covered other various 
um, areas that in your business, right? Yes, I mean, we've done a lot of, I mean, in, in our events, for example, here, we're very proud of this. So this is our, ah, oh, this is a very heavy one. 2013, our Huron Polo team ah. became champions in China. <laughs> And we, we then lost in 2014. So we've only won one time. So we just keep one. Next time we have 2018 or 2019, we'll also be here as well. But it's, it's quite fun. It's like a sort of, we're trying to keep quite lively and have a quite an exciting lifestyle. And so polo is a very small sport, but it's quite exciting, quite new as well. So um, that, that's the idea of what we're, what we're doing. Now, uh, Huren has become the leading authority when we talk about the wealthy Chinese. So uh, many people may wonder how you and your team collect so many data and numbers. Is there an interesting story yeah, I mean, or challenges? It is quite fun. I mean, we really feel that, uh, I mean, it, it's a re it, this is, you're coming into my office, by the way. Here, this is my office. <laughs> you, give, you can see my office. Sorry, it's a bit, uh, it's quite easy. We have, it's a very cool wallpaper because... Yeah. It's my first job. When I, was, um, when I was 20 or something, I worked for this company called Digone. And um, they, oh, she's here, in fact, if you're interested. And, um, and this is the brand. It's a, it's a British brand that was really proud of saying, I'm made in China, luxury. So it's the first brand in, in I think it's one of the first luxury brands in the world that was proud to say, I'm a made in China brand. And, 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 ex and I can expense, sell very, very expensive. It's all hand-painted and stuff like that. And so this is sort of what uh, I'm very proud of. We, Huron Report is a made-in-China brand. You know, we're very proud that we're a made-in-China brand. You know, it, of course, we're going global now. But as we go global, we're still sort of, we're still, our heart is Chinese. And in a way, I, I like the DNA of what this symbolism is. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a super quality Made in China, you know, brand, which is what we are as well. So, back to the, um, so, so, so going back, I mean, uh, I mean, what do we do? I mean, we do, we do the the rich list series is our most famous. So we have the uh, China rich list, um, the global rich list. Actually, we just launched yesterday the India rich list. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have about thirty people in India, and we launched the India rich list. Six hundred people on our list. It's grown five times. And the reason I'm really into India is because I like comparing the development of China, you know, 1.3 billion people, with the development of India, 1.3 billion people. <laughs> so, so that's sort of, uh, it's, it's one of my hobbies, if you like. Uh, but we've turned it into real business, and we've got quite a strong, uh, we've got quite a strong established presence now there. But how do we do it? For the rich, this series, you basically just got to, you, you have these analysts and researchers, and they keep track of what's going on with the listed companies, with what's going on in the investment world, and, and, and so on and so forth. For example, one of the big challenges that I faced is that our brand is 18 years old now. So that means that we've started in 99, we're now 18 years old in the, as a brand. But it also means that a lot of the top entrepreneurs that we knew are getting quite old. So you can think like, you know, I you knew this guy who was like 40, maybe 18 years ago. Now he's mid-50s or even 60s. So one of the big challenges I face is to try and keep our brand young. Mm. So about two, three days ago, we created a, a list of the, the most influential 30, Huron, 30 under 30. <laughs> so we found 30 people who are under 30 who are really amazingly influential. For example, the Wonsetong. founder, yeah, the fa Wonsetong is one of yeah. them because he's got a really strong social media presence. He's the son of the richest man in China, yeah. uh, Wang Tianhe. But his social media presence and his investment in the, uh, in, well, it's mainly his social media presence amongst the Bati Hop, so those who are born, uh, who are 30 years or, or, or under, is, is quite significant. So he's the only second generation on the list. But the other ones that are quite famous is, for example, the founder of OFO. Oh. It's a um, mobile, it's a, it's a bicycle app, uh, and it's incredibly popular. Mm -hmm. and, and he's only 26 years old. And he's built a business that's multi-billion dollar business. I mean, it's, it's an amazing story. So that's how we try to keep our brand young, mm -hmm. uh, by starting to reach out to more and more of these younger people as well. And you, you may be uh, somehow to be moved by their spirits. Or is there any interesting story when the people, they're chasing their dream, and they make their profits? Do you find, yeah, any, find any some stories, <laughs> that, the, success I mean, stories I, that moves I, you? I, I have to say, I find China 
<coughs> incredibly exciting to be uh, watching entrepreneurship. I mean, there are so many brilliant ideas that are sort of being thrown out. Many of them fail, but every now and again, and we meet a lot of the ones that are successful because of our, our, our lists and the work that we do. You know, I mean, and, and what always amazes me is that how some of the people that I met, like Jack Ma from Alibaba, I first met him in 2001, and he wasn't very famous. <laughs> he, he was quite a noisy guy because he had a very, he, I say noisy in the sense that he, he, he did very good, he was a very, very good talker. And, and he made people laugh and he made people stand up and pay attention. But I never believed that he was going to be a businessman with a, you know, controlling a $400 billion valuation of Alibaba. I mean, and, and that's, I suppose, what's such fun about this, what we're, this 18 years is that we've been watching entrepreneurs grow literally from almost nothing into today not just being China beaters, but world beaters. And as Jack Ma has grown from a small Hangzhou operation into today, you know, probably the most best known Chinese entrepreneur in the world, mm. you know, and we've been a part of that in a way. And, and it's, that's, I find it incredibly exciting. Uh, take another example. I mean, you know, even the likes of Wang Jianning. You know, the first time Wang Jianning, uh, you know, I, I, I wrote to Wang Jianning to say, we want to put you on the rich list. He said, he's tried to sue me. He sent me a, a, he sent me a lawyer's letter. <laughs> to say, really? Because I don't want to be on the list and I don't have that much money and so on and so forth. And he wanted to keep low profile. We still put him on the list. And, you know, because we had quite good sources to, or, you know, public available sources. We only use publicly available data. Mm -hmm. So that, that's one of the things. That's the reason we survived in China, only using publicly available data. But um, it, it, it does make me, you know, that's the first time we met him was with a lawyer. <laughs> such. But since then, you know, he's grown also his business, not just to be a, a big business in North China, but to be a big business in the whole of China and around the whole of the world now as well. You know, the same thing with another brand called Huawei. Mm. So Ren Zhengfei, who's the CEO and founder of Huawei, you know, in 2000, when I first started my list, you know, we were, uh, we tracked him, we worked out he was a really big guy, and we tried, and we put him on the list, number three, and again, the lawyers came to speak to us. <laughs> so a lot of these entrepreneurs, the first time we met them was always with, uh, through the law firms, the <laughs> uh, because they wanted to sue us or something like that. Um, but, uh, you know, so long as we can prove it in the public, in the public eye, you know, then that, that sort of we can actually put them on the list. And I suppose that's where our credibility has come. Mm. You know, we've managed to put a lot of people who didn't want to be on the list, on the list. Mm. And as such, that's why people actually quite respect us um, because we're seen to be quite impartial and third, third party um, yeah. people in this, a third party voice, if you like. And many data support your results. Yeah, and, and, and the other thing that we can, every single person on the list, we can prove to you how we did it. Wow. So we have often journalists, for example, Tsung Ting Ho from Wahaha in Zhejiang, he was on the, on the list for the first time. And a lot of the journalists are questioning us, say, how can you make him be, you know, how did you value his wealth? Because he's not listed company. So we were able to disclose our valuation methodology for Tsung Ching Ho. And that was something that convinced a lot of people that, oh yes, that's correct. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but anyway, so that, I mean, but, but a lot of people think that Huron Report today is always about the rich list. The rich list is our best product. But in fact, we do loads of other stuff. Can I show you something? Yeah? Yeah, okay. Um, so other what's your report? Well, I was going to... just sit here? You want to sit here? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I can just show you this. Yeah, maybe yeah. Okay. Or, or walk around. Oh, I can walk around. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the other things that we do that we're quite proud of is we do a lot of these sort of um, reports. We now claim to be the world's leading authority mm -hmm. when it comes to researching the Chinese high net worth individual. In Chinese, you say, and um, So... These, this group of people, the high net worth group, the sort of the millionaire class, if you like, in China, they have massive firepower. They have a lot of purchasing power. And actually, they also got a lot of choice. So these people, what they're deciding to do today, in many ways, will reflect the future trend of what might happen in China. This is a report that we did, a 46-page report on wellness and health education. Ah, it's a brilliant report. You know, it tells you, you know, how do the, on the young entrepreneurs today... In, how do you take on more and more um, uh, pressure? Yeah. And it says sports, sports or chaos. chat with your friends yeah. or, or just let it be. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, lots of, and it, it's, there's lots of insights into 
you know, sort of, for example, wellness. You know, uh, we did something on investment immigration because there was a very big trend of Chinese now to going overseas to immigrate or send their children to school or just buy houses. And we did a re uh, this research uh, with a, another yeah, company about, called... Yes, about investments, immigrations. Yeah, and, and we looked, but we ranked the top cities in the world for where Chinese are now buying uh, real estate. Number one in the world is LA. Number two, Seattle. Number three, this is in the world, San Francisco, New York, Boston. Basically, Chinese, absolutely, mainland Chinese now just love anything to do with North America. And then Australia and Canada and then Singapore and the UK, fun enough, is up there as well. But that was another really cool list. And these are sort of stuff that we do. And we, this is sort of our bread and butter, if you like. And there's, there's lots of it. And they're very famous brands that we work with. This is Taikang, which is one of the biggest insurance companies in, in yeah. China. And we've done a three-year report on the Chinese high net worth healthcare and retirement planning. I mean, you might think it's kind of a boring topic. But in fact, a lot of the Chinese entrepreneurs are about 40-something. A lot of their parents are getting quite old. So they need to start preparing for the retirement of their parents. <laughs> anyway, and so, so it's all very practical stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, and gifting and so on and so forth. So, I mean, these are, the, these are just some of the stuff. I mean, another one that I really like is this one here. One Belt, One Road. Belt, Road. <laughs> we did, I mean, this is part of the Rich List series. We did a One Belt, One Road Rich List. So um, ranking to this area's richness people? But it's kind of, uh, it's a little bit of a sense of humor as well, you know, to do one belt, one road rich list. The idea was that if you're a Chinese businessman, a lot of the business people that I talk to, they don't really know how to do one belt, one road. Uh, you know, because I mean, the government has, has made this big policy and, and said that we should encourage people to do one belt, one road. Yeah. So my thinking is that if you're a Chinese entrepreneur and you don't know where to start, you probably start with the best entrepreneurs in the One Belt, One Road region. So we found, you know, sort of, um, we found 500 entrepreneurs on the list uh, from the One Belt, in, in the 63 countries from the One Belt, One Road. And so if you want to say, you want to go and do business in Russia, but you don't know where to start, see if you can meet one of the top Russian entrepreneurs. <laughs> and they will give you good ideas. So the idea was to help these Chinese entrepreneurs find potential partners. It's a good starting spot. So we've seen you uh, establish your business here and then, quite successfully, yeah, and you is, have. Is, and we've had lots of fun. I mean, <laughs> so we have a, our own tailor. We have our own suit company. Oh, really? <laughs> so we have bespoke suits. Oh, so this, so I keep them in here. Enter the fashion industry. Well, I wouldn't call it so much fashion. I think it's more. Um, it's called Dojo oh. Horan, oh. and then we partner with a, a tailor, and we found that a lot of the Chinese entrepreneurs. Before, they used to just wear very um, simple clothes. Mm. And now, as their businesses grow bigger and they meet more investors, mm. we feel that they want to wear tailor-made outfits. So we have a tailor-made suit outfit, so I, I have that as well. It's just quite fun. I mean, if these things like the bicycle and this, it, it will not be a very big business necessarily, mm. but we think it's very meaningful, yeah. and it's a very good way of engaging the Chinese entrepreneurs as well. So how is your, I mean, family life in Shanghai? Do your family live in Shanghai? Do they live here? Yeah, no, I mean, so I, I, my wife is, in, is English. She doesn't speak very good Chinese, um, but she's a medical doctor here in, 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 Shanghai. in Shanghai. And and she's been, and we've been living here, I mean, pretty much for almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. And then the children are also at school here. Uh, we chose to try and send them to local Chinese school so that they could actually learn proper Chinese. Uh, or bilingual school, I think it's called, so they could learn proper Chinese, and so you know, so that they they're not they're not expats as such. They actually have a lot of local friends as well. Um, so, I mean, so and we drive. I drive my own car, and uh, these are some of the photographs. A photograph of my wife, and then my children. There's three children. Actually, it's quite old. They're, they're, it's quite an old photograph. Um, uh, so that's a few years ago, and then. These are things that I'm quite proud of. I was once um, in 2002 or Two. something. 2002. I was, I was man of the year for the whole of China. Oh. So the year before it was the um, uh, just one guy, it's me. And Yao Ming oh. came second. <laughs> <laughs> and Yao Ming never won man of the year. Liu Xiang actually won. Uh, Liu Xiang was a very famous hurdler. Yeah. 
uh, who won the Olympic gold. He won Man of the Year about four years later. But I'm very proud of that. That's something that um, is, is very is, is, is uh, something I'm very proud of. I got the Magnolia Award, which is something that uh, if you do quite well and you have a good impact in China, you get recognised by the local government for bringing business here. And then I know Mao Tai. Um, there's a the famous Chinese entrepreneur. Uh, there's a famous chairman of Mao Tai called Ji Keliang. He signed this bottle for me. <laughs> so, uh, and, and he's somebody who I really admire. He might be a state-owned company. Mao Tai is a state-owned company, but he created this. He built this brand pretty much from almost nothing 40 years ago into the largest drinks brand by value in the world. And people in China they have huge respect for him. And I met him once, and he signed a bottle for me. So I left it there. I haven't drunk it yet. Maybe one day we can drink it together. <laughs> <laughs> and we, uh, we've seen that uh, you have so many things uh, related to, closely related to Chinese uh, company, Chinese uh, entrepreneurs, Chinese uh, uh, economy, and even Chinese culture. So, uh, are there any dreams that you you are trying to fulfilling in the, uh, trying to fulfill in, in China? So everybody knows. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I mean, my take is that we've seen the largest explosion of wealth in the world in the last 10 years, and it's happened in China. It's pretty much happened all around me. And, and I'm really proud to have been a part of it. You know, I know that the people I'm meeting are people, are, hi are historical figures. In 100 years' time, a lot of history books will be written about Wang Jianning, about Ma Yun, about some of these these amazing entrepreneurs around us. And, and every day, I almost, almost every day, at least three times a week, I'll meet somebody I think is amazing. And I know that I'm around these, his, these history makers. And I suppose that's something that I find so exciting about this business, is that you are around these people. We're not a big business. You know, we, we're only you know, 150 people. Um, but in our particular niche, we're sort of one of the best in, in our particular field. You know, we've managed to expand to India, and we're going to grow fast in India. And then I want to do Dubai. Uh, my plan for this year is I'm opening my Dubai office, and next year is my Africa office. And then we will do the developing countries and the developing markets, so that China is today's, today's news, India is tomorrow's news, and then the day after tomorrow is Africa. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that way, you know, sort of, uh, my my son, my daughters can take on a business for another hundred years, uh, is is the plan. Yeah. Thank you very much, and hopefully, your plan will be come true <laughs> as soon as possible. Well, I won't be there in a hundred years, but anyway, it's still quite a quite a fun idea. But no, it's thank you. It's it's a, it's no, it's the best place in the world for watching entrepreneurship where we are today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, that's the story, today's story, and I hope you like it. And uh, we uh, have a close uh, contact with uh, Mr. Hu, Hu Zhuo, uh, Chinese name is uh, Hu Ren. And his story tells us that uh, we have very close uh, look and views on the Chinese economy and the Chinese uh, uh, economic uh, growth. And uh, so uh, his uh, report, his uh, uh, rich list is so convincing and so widely spread that even we forgot he is a foreigner. That's maybe because he is uh, uh, so uh, looking at the China China's change so closely. So that's uh, today's story, and uh, we hope you like it. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>